to the New Leaf Podcast. This is a podcast mainly about crocheting and knitting, but also about some behind the scenes stuff of designing, some spinning, some natural dyeing. So if you like those kind of subjects, stick around and watch. My name is Carmen. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Crafty Queens, on Ravelry as Caramelletje. And I have my own blog, craftyqueens.nl. On Etsy, I am New Leaf Designs NL. As much as I had to show you last week, this week uh, is a bit, well, not short on projects, but um, a bit less. <laughs> uh, I mainly work on socks, and there's some new commission work going on. Um, so I worked a lot on that, but I can show you. And I also have some natural dyeing progress to show you. Um, so first, let's start with my finished object of the week. Uh, I'm saying that like I have a finished object every week, but I don't want to <laughs> challenge myself to that. So I'm going to show you my finished object. I've already added it to my basket of socks. I don't have a box of socks uh, yet. I might get one. Um, here they are. Um, most of these are not for me. Um, these are for me. This is also, these are from a pattern I, uh, I wrote myself. These are my simple toe up socks. And you can also find tutorial for these, um, tutorials, multiple for these on my, uh, channel. Uh, I have a tutorial for, um, for the cast on. Uh, how to increase, how to do a German shorter heel, and how to um, how to bind off stretchily. And I also have a bonus video on how to close the gap on either side of the heel. So right here, you sometimes have a hole, and in the tutorial, I'm showing you how to close it. And I also have a bonus uh, a video on how to weave in your ends. So that's the first pair. Uh, second pair in here. So this is not from this week. This is... Uh, I'll come to that. <laughs> uh, these were just lying on top. These were a finished object from uh, a couple of months ago. I think in April. I still love these. I'm. I can't wait. Well, I'm enjoying the warm weather now, um, but when it gets colder, I will be able to wear these again. Ah, oh, and I love them so much. Believe it or not, this was from one uh, 100 gram skein. Yeah, they're up to my knee, but not over my knee, just up to my knee. So that's pair number two. And yeah, here we have my finished object. So these were the socks I started last uh, last weekend. So I started them last weekend on Saturday. And now it is Sunday uh, as I'm filming this. And last week I had completed this one in under 24 hours, uh, but I think I think I knit about 10 hours on it, so uh, Saturday I pretty much knitted non-stop. <laughs> and then uh, Sunday morning I also casted on the uh, second sock. You can see the little progress keeper, little ice cream cone right there. And so I did that. And then from that point on, I did the rest of the sock. I just completed it um, yesterday. So this one I did in one day, and this one from Sunday to Saturday, so one week. But still, uh, about one week in total for a whole pair of socks, which is amazingly fast for me. Um, and these are vanilla socks, but I'm using a different heel than I normally would. So um, 
I knit them toe up. And usually I would do a German short row heel, which is my favorite heel, and I just, I have it memorized. Um, this one is pretty, pretty okay too. This uh, is from a paid for pattern by Louise Tilbrooks, and uh, the pattern is called Seed Pods. And it has, it has some gusset increases, tiny heel flap. And then the, um, or what's it called? No, this is the heel turn and this is the heel flap, right? I think. So, and it has a slip stitch heel flap. And let's see, my first pair was looking kind of strange um, because I am doing a 60 stitch um, sock. And uh, the pattern uh, was written for a sock with more stitches. And I just followed the instructions for the heel as they were in the pattern. So the, the heel turned out quite big as, you know, I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, but I, for the next pair of socks I will be knitting, I will be trying this heel again and then trying to modify the stitch count so that it will actually work out. Um, and in the pattern, I didn't mention this last time, in the pattern um, there are wrap and turns. So wrap and turn short rows and I uh, substituted them for short row, no, for a German short row. Um, and on the first sock I did that wrong. I, um, I guessed wrong where I should put the German short row stitch and I uh, fixed that on the second sock. But you can't really tell the difference if I'm showing you, it just, it, uh, it's a bit more snug around the heel. So I hope this will give a better fit. So they're not identical because, you know, one has a baggier heel, but I'm still not a very uh, fluent sock knitter, so I I'm, I don't mind. Even though this is a gift, um, if every one of them had to be perfect, then I would have none to give right now. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I will have to redo some socks I will show you in a minute. So yeah, I can take the progress keeper off and then I can uh, block these and then put them in my basket. And here's the pair of socks I finished most recently before that one, um, which are my coral reef socks. And I finally blocked them and they feel so soft. This, this yarn is literally the softest. Um, it's not the first hand dyed yarn that I have knit with, That's, that would be this one. Yes, believe it or not, this is hand dyed. This is by Trailing Clouds uh, yarn and it's a 12 self-striping, so a self-striper with 12 stripes. It's amazing. Um, the others, so this is the only other hand dyed uh, pair. Uh, and the yarn is so soft. Is this? Um, it's Ushitita fiber art, and I knit the Mercury socks. Yeah, and I just love them. Uh, then I have uh, a stray sock. <laughs> I still have to knit the second one. This will be for my dad. Um, yeah, some lovely Christmas socks. Um, it's the Arna and Carlos yarn. If you're not familiar with how it looks. Um, then I have... So that was... Wait a minute. So with my finished object from this week, that was number three. And then this one was pair number four. This one I won't count. So now it's pair number five. And these are huge. Uh, they will be for my brother. These are uh, made with a yarn called Rigia Perfect. 
and they are pretty perfect. Yes, I would say. So that was pair number five. Then pair number six, also made with Regia. Um, yeah, and I, I see what the problem was with this one. So I completely followed the same pattern for each of these, but one is much bigger than the other. So I have no idea what that's about. I just have no idea. I knit them with the same needle, since that would clarify it, but I knit them with the same needle. And I don't want to rip it out. So, um, these are also a gift. And I'm hoping that they will... Well, I, I fitted the first one and that was fine, but the, the second one came out a little bit bigger. But as it has cabling down the front, I'm hoping that that will cinch, cinch the sock in a little bit so it will still fit. Um, yeah, and otherwise, I mean, I don't think she'll actually wear these in socks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think she'll actually wear these in shoes, so these will be house socks maybe. Yeah, but I still like them and they are pink and sprinkly and, or how do you call them, confetti style. Yeah, the pattern is Rose Hip Socks by Verena Kors. Um, yeah, I did, a, I did a German short row heel for this one. That was not in the pattern, I just did that. Um, so that's number six. And here is the last pair. This is by far the biggest pair I've ever knit. Um, <laughs> look at these! Oh my god! Yes. This, uh, these socks I have made for uh, my... Um, for my boyfriend's sister's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and the mistake I made on these is that, well, I had finished the first one and it was fine, uh, but I had done the uh, shorter heel and I thought that the instep would be a little bit too, uh, too snug. So I thought, oh, I have to add some uh, stitches doing the heel. But then I, I kind of did that wrong and I, so I increased and then I worked those stitches as part of the heel and not as part of the instep. So it has a very big heel, which looks completely ridiculous. Look, it looks ridiculous. Like who has a pointy heel like that? So um, I finished these in February, I think. January or February, and I just was so done with it. Um, and so that I just put it aside for a while, but I think before I'm gonna gift them, I will somehow fix this. Don't know how, but I will. Either I'm gonna just knit re-knit the whole heel, maybe as an afterthought heel, probably. Um, don't know how that will look, but yeah, I will just, I will probably then cut the yarn and, well, insert the needle first, needles here and there, uh, and then do some kind of true afterthought heel. Uh, I knit this originally toe up as a short row heel. Um, yeah. So either I'm doing the afterthought heel on the whole thing, or I'm only cutting the last part. That might actually be a better idea, because the first part is fine. I just need to um, decrease 
uh, faster here or uh, just leave more stitches here then it's fine right <laughs> well it will look better than this um, yeah so that's pair number eight no no wait this is seven right yeah eight. pair number seven yeah so that's seven pairs this year and it's August so I'm on schedule yeah uh, well, I'm on schedule for the box of socks. I'm not on schedule um, uh, for gift knitting. Thing there, the sock I have just cast on is also a gift. There, my fun little basket of socks. So I'm using the same bag again, and also the same yarn but in a different colorway so the same yarn so the same yarn as I did these in it's filled our filled folk 100 and this is oh um, right now I know that this is not the colorway number because it's the same one as <laughs> as the other sock. So it I it says hundred, but so that's not the colorway um, number. I guess the colorways all, only have names then. And this is called galactic, so um, kind of galactic uh, spacey theme, and I can see why it makes me think of starry nights. And yeah, falling stars. And I will be pairing the yarn with this fun little mini I got from Ushitita. It's beautiful. So I will do I will be doing a toe up sock and then this will be the cuff. Um, and I hope it will be because the yarn this one is a little bit thinner and I'm using the smallest needle I have already for this and yeah so I hope I hope it won't be like a flimsy cuff we'll see it will be fine and I have stored them in my needle cozy and I've just uh, realized that I have not done this correctly because <laughs> Well, the needle cozy is actually meant so that you put your needles inside so that it doesn't poke through the bag. But this is a very sturdy bag, so no worries. I've only just started this morning. So it's a very... It's a very small toe. But I like the look of it already. Look how cute this is. I just oh, so cute so I hope it will just be like that <laughs> it keeps focusing on me um, yeah so it just has tiny little white flecks and I hope it will be like that for the whole sock um, yeah and I think it will look really cool combined with purple yeah, really happy about this. So that will be my eighth pair. And it's also a gift knit. Um, so I will be following the same kind of vanilla sock pattern. Um, also 60 stitches. Uh, but this time I will see if I can modify the uh, toe up gusset heel a little bit more. So that it won't be super baggy. Yeah. This time I'll put it in correctly. There we go. Uh, this needle cozy I got at Craftfulness, which is a Dutch yarn brand. It's very, very small to tag, but Craftfulness by Sandra. Oh, right. Now, uh, now I say Sandra's name. I have to think of another Sandra. And I realize I... There's something I haven't told you about the finished socks. And that is 
And I don't know where I saw this uh, first, but Sandra from uh, Cherry Heart Podcast and also Danny from Little Bobbins, I think. Um, they had this idea of also doing the uh, slip stitch along the heel turn. And I thought that was a really good idea since I like a sturdier heel. Um, so I went ahead and did that. It didn't really work out for the first one, <laughs> but um, <laughs> as with the with the short rows, it's kind of difficult uh, to get it right. But yeah, it it's okay. It's it's the bottom of the heel. She won't even notice that. The people who are gifting these two are not knitters themselves, so <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm just a lazy knitter, but yeah, I didn't feel like ripping back and correcting it simply because it doesn't doesn't even matter. But on the second one, it kind of worked out. Um, and I also uh, want to try something like this for my short row heels. And I noticed that someone was doing garter stitch short row heels, and that just sounds like the comfiest heel ever and also the sturdiest one so I will do a garter stitch short row heel once or I mean sometime in the future not just once um yeah so that was what I forgot to tell you so that and the uh commission is what I have been working on most this week um yeah, the commission work is really flying and I'm so happy with that uh, since usually I'm uh, just rushing it at the last minute. Um, knock on wood since, you know, <laughs> I've only just started, but uh, it is due by uh, November 1st, so I still have quite a while, so we'll be fine. I haven't worked on any of my shawls this week. I have, well, just a little bit. Uh, I have the Piccadilly shawl uh, on the needles and also my Breeze Blocks shawl, uh, the winter version with mohair. But uh, since there was so little progress, I decided not to show you. So if you'd like, if you have missed the previous episode, I would suggest you go and watch that uh, or you could um, go and check out my Instagram. Um, but I will show those. Uh, in future episodes whenever I have done some more work on them. <laughs> okay, so this is post-podcasting Carmen. I'm from the future. Um, <laughs> and I just realized that I totally forgot to put in my natural dyeing clips. So I will just put them in right here and enjoy the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Bye-bye. So I've been winding some yarn in little skeins like this it is oops it is Scipius Invicta Extra which I have used for socks before um, and it's oops dropping everything it's 75% wool and 25% polyamide or nylon and I found out there's this um, dye plant in my garden and I'm gonna use it to try and dye some yarn. So I just ordered these to, yeah, just see and just kind of experiment. And yeah, I wound them all into little skeins because this is just 100 grams just from two balls. But um, yeah, these are approximately 20, 30 grams each. Uh, some of them maybe 10 grams um, Yeah, so I'm gonna try and mordant them and then do some dyeing So I got my yarn in here in this uh, plastic bucket just in water because um, Before I'm gonna mordant it it has to be wet or that will uh, Facilitate the process of it picking up the dye. So this is the yarn I just showed you skeined up. This is the Scapies Invicta Extra. And this is some 
other yarn I had bought previously, which is a sparkly yarn. Not sure if that picks up at all. I see some sparkles here. Um, so this is yarn that I picked up before and I do want to dye, but um, not right now, but that's the beauty of mordanting because once a yarn is mordanted, you can just let it dry and um, you just have to make it wet again just before you use it, but it will stay mordanted. So, so that's great. Um, yeah, so let me show you the mordant. So here I got my mordant, which is alum. It says, <clears throat> it says alone in Dutch. Uh, this is a kilo. Then I have this bowl where I'm gonna put it in and then I have to uh, add some boiled water. Um, so for each 100 grams of yarn, I have to add 15 grams of alum. So for the 600 grams that I have, that's going to be 90 grams of alum. So I'm going to put that in here. So I'm going to turn on my scales. And then I'm just going to yep, make that zero. Here's the alum, so I'm gonna add little scoops of this until I have 90 grams. I'm gonna put it a bit closer because I know myself all too well. Okay, almost. Oops. Okay, take something out. Perfect. Okay, just gonna leave this scoop in there. Now I'm gonna add the boiling water or just boiled water to this because alum only dissolves uh, at above 92 degrees Celsius. I don't think it matters how many, how much water you put in, because it will be dissolved later um, in a bigger tub. all dissolved so what happens now is that we're going to um, put it in a bigger bowl or actually a pan and then just um, well not cook it but heat it with the yarn in it so I'm using this pan to mordant my yarn and here it is it's still cold at the top, so it's gonna take a while. I'm not sure if I should have used a pan this high though, because it might become much warmer in the bottom than it would be in the top, but all right. And then here I have my berries, my pokeweed berries. And they have been in here for quite a while. Uh, I harvested them about two weeks ago, I think. So I'm going to put them in this aluminium pot and I'm just going to boil those. Um, and then drain, yeah, drain the little bits and pieces out of it. So, there they go. There was already some kind of juice in the, um, in the bottom of the jar. And it looks so vibrantly purple. I can't wait for this color. Uh, I can't wait to see what it looks like.
So I just finished mordanting the yarn and I have it here on tie wraps. I should have put them in earlier because some of them are really tangled. And I also finished preparing the dye. Here are what's left of the berries, which is kind of gross. Um, yeah, and the dye is in here right now. So, let's see. It's a bit red. Yeah, it's looking more red than purple, what I was looking for, but we'll see. So now I'm just going to add... Um, I have five uh, minis and I'm gonna add two of them first uh, with a little bit extra water and then I'm gonna add more water and then add the other three uh, minis uh, to see if I can get two darker ones and three lighter ones. So in the previous little clip, you saw that I put the uh, bare white yarn into the dye pot and the dye was looking kind of red, like red wine almost. Um, <laughs> and once it was finished, well not boiling, but um, simmering, uh, I let it cool off in the dye pot. And I could already see that it was not what I had expected, uh, but ironically or paradoxically or whatever, that is actually to be expected when plant dying. So it never really turns out the way that you envision it, which is part of the appeal. But um, yeah, I was still looking forward to kind of red purpley color. And instead, I got this kind of looks like noodles. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of this, this like spaghetti noodle color. It smells a bit weird still. Um, yeah, so it's kind of brown, yellowy, greeny, um, yeah, kind of sandy color or dark beige or something like that or blonde. <laughs> um, yeah, so totally unexpected. Uh, I did do some more research on uh, pokeweed. Um, oh, by the way, you can see that, well, I don't know if you can see, but these are a little bit darker than these. These are the ones I put into the dye bath, dye bath first, and these I add uh, an hour later. Uh, I didn't add any more water, like I said before, but um, yeah, I figured that I didn't need to dilute the dye any further. Um, so yeah, I did some uh, research on uh, pokeweed and uh, it seems that the European uh, plant that we have here um, dyes a bit differently. I have seen uh, American pokeweed produce kind of purple shades, um, but uh, the European kind only produces some kind of orange shade, but uh, I think I had too little uh, dye material for that, I guess. Or maybe it needs a different mordant. Uh, or maybe I need to do something with pH, like make it more acidic or less, uh, something like that. Could be the case. Um, yeah, but... So the plant has grown some more berries, um, but I've decided not to over-dye it with the same berries because I 
if it would be successful then I would get some kind of orange shade I, I guess now uh, and orange is not really my fave so <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of over dyeing it with something else in the future um, yeah so it will uh, stay like this for now um, and I will have some plans with it in the future but for now I'm gonna leave these alone <laughs> uh, I have also mordanted the uh, other uh, skeins with a little glitter uh, that I got earlier in the year and I will be dyeing those with acid dyes since I want well my plan for them is to, to um, dye them all the same color um, but it is kind of fun to experiment, so I might dye each skein a different color, but we will see. Uh, so this is my experiment for now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna magically return back to the usual podcast. Uh, I have done some more uh, organizing in my craft room and now it is almost completely finished. Uh, I put in some some clips in the intro so as you've hopefully been able to see I have uh, my working desk or table in the middle of the room uh, right in front of me here and um, then I have this wall with my chair and where I can spin and I have my closet full of uh, books and uh, indie dyed yarn, then I have the spinning wheel and my uh, little uh, sewing uh, cabinet that you can take apart like this. Um, and then the opposite wall is this IKEA type closet and um, it has all kinds of things on top and I just, uh, it's so inspirational looking at it. You have, um, my octopus and yeah several other things uh, works in progress my basket of socks I just showed you uh, some hand dyed yarn and it's just so nice and then I have my crochet lampshade of course and I just I just love being here and having this space in my house um, having enough room to block things <laughs> just uh, having a table I don't need to clean up because we need to have dinner at that exact table um, I don't want to say I don't want to clean up my desk but you know I don't want to clean it or I don't want to have to put things away while I'm still in the process of you know in the creative process and if it stays that way I might get Maybe these are excuses not to clean up, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's my room and um, yeah, it's I'm really happy with it. I have one more thing to talk about, and it's a really uh, fun event coming up. Um, it's coming up, I think, twenty sixth of August. Let me check. Yeah, it's a really fun event on the twenty sixth of August. It's the West Knits Amical, so Mystery Cal, Mystery Knit Along, uh, launch party at Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam, which is the fabulous yarn store. And Stephen West himself will be there. And uh, there are 25 tickets available. When I checked the site this morning, there were only seven tickets left. Uh, and I have already gotten my ticket and also uh, a friend of mine is coming with me so it's really really exciting and uh, so it's it's a mystery little long launch party launch launch party <laughs> so I guess we will see maybe just a little bit of the mystery knit along uh, maybe he will explain what kind of techniques will be used because because it will still be a mystery nail along and we will be the first to choose from the um, mystery nail along kits so I might be <laughs> uh, making a purchase there uh, the the uh, entry fee was 25 euros and you also get 
a, sh a shopkeeper of 25 years or so. Um, yeah, I, I will be spending that on some hedgehog yarn or maybe one of the kids. Um, yeah, and I'm just really looking forward to it. It's from 7 to 10 p.m. in the evening in Amsterdam, so uh, which is quite a long train ride away from where I live. So I will be staying at my friend's house, which is also really fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And um, I don't know if I mentioned it last time or the time before that. I have bought two Stephen West patterns, but I don't think I will be casting them on before I go. Um, you know, since he will be uh, helping with uh, color like choosing color and I might be able to use that for uh, for one of the two pens I bought. I bought Parachute and uh, Exploration Station and I was showing you the yarn. I have some neon yarn so yeah I might be using that but um, yeah. So that's uh, basically what's going on in my life right now. So the launch party is not next weekend but the weekend after that so uh, I think in two episodes I will be able to show some footage of the launch party. I hope if I'm allowed to, to film in there. I get, I hope I will. I'll probably be allowed to. Before I go, just one final thing. I have a recommendation for this week. Uh, I have been watching some episodes of Pau Knits again uh, after uh, he so kindly commented on my uh, podcast last week. Um, and Pau, I, I watched his first few episodes and then I kind of, um, I don't know, forgot. <laughs> I had so many things going on, so many podcasts, and I kind of forgot about his, um, which is really bad. Um, and then uh, just this morning I watched his most recent podcast and he just cracks me up. He is so, he's so hilarious with his uh, sound effects and uh, yeah, it's really hilarious. And I also think it's really, um, uh, well, different to see uh, a male podcaster, you know, a male knitting podcaster. I also watch Eric from Six Plus, Six Plus Twine. I also think it's really, you know, something different uh, to watch and um, I'm always wondering what male knitters or crocheters would make and um, yeah, he had some lovely, lovely um, finished objects and whips and um, yeah, I really enjoyed his podcast so go ahead and watch uh, one of his episodes, Pow Knits. Um, that's it for me for this week. I will get back to my commission project and I'll work a few more hours on that. Well, just, just a little bit more. And um, I wish you all a very crafty week and I hope you see, to see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. See you. Bye-bye.